Hello you guys, James Gibbs III here, as known as King James III, and I hope you enjoyed the first lesson on how to buzz into your mouthpiece. Uh, so this is going to be a rebuttal from that first lesson, and this is called Misconceptions and Benefits of Buzzing into Your Mouthpiece. Okay, please stick around because there's some very valuable information in this. And so if you're ready, I am ready. So let's go, here we go. All right, before I get into it, I just wanna say thank you for tuning in. And the reason why I am making this video for you is because by me being in this music world for as long as I have, um, well over 20 years of, of touring, performing, and my life experiences in this, I want to convey the life stuff into all of this as well, okay? So this is not just a lecture just to say what to do, what not to do. This is life stuff just kind of giving you a heads up on what you can be facing, um, what you may be facing, and or what you may not face. But at least you have the information. I'm just giving you information that for the most part was not given to me whatsoever. Um, I pretty much had to learn as I went in this journey. And I'm gonna be honest with you, a lot of it was good and a whole lot of it was not so good. But what I wanna do is convey my wisdom onto you guys. Hope that it, it definitely get puts you in the right path so you can either avoid the mistakes that I made or make help you make better choices, okay? So let's get right into this small lecture of misconceptions and benefits of buzzing into your mouthpiece. Okay, so misconception. What is a misconception? All right, well, if you look it up on Google, it says a misconception is a view or opinion that is incorrect based on faulty thinking or understanding, okay? I'm basing that on teachers may have been conveying on to, you know, to your students um, over the years that could have just been based on faulty thinking from another person, a teacher, okay? So when, what I mean by that is a lot of um, music teachers out here don't really have too much life experience when it comes to performing uh, or touring or, or, or playing with um, certain caliber level of musicians in different situations. A lot of them don't. A lot of them come straight from college into the school system, may do some playing every now and again on these summer times off or whatever, but nothing at a level that most musicians who do this full time would have um, ran into. Misconceptions are given all the time, especially when it comes to this music thing. So here's one misconception. You do not always have to buzz into your, into your mouthpiece before you play, all right? That is definitely one big misconception, um, especially at this beginner, at this beginner stage, um, your teacher will always say, hey, you make sure you take your mouthpiece out of your case and before you play one note, in your trumpet, you buzz into your mouthpiece. Just, just warm the lips up, warm up the chops, your arm, or whatever they call it, and just get the blood flowing so you'll be able to play notes. Well, the only reason why that's a big, big misconception to me, in my opinion, if you do not have a tone center to focus on, all right, is all you're doing is just making noise in your mouthpiece. And what I mean by that is, at the beginning stage, you're muscle is very very fragile and you may experience pain very very soon than a person who's been playing a while because the muscle has been broken in it's almost like lifting weights you know if you haven't been to the gym and you start curling dumbbells and you keep doing it and you're saying like man after 15 reps you know your muscles start to hurt you know you just don't keep doing it you know you're breaking that muscle in you got to let the muscle relax and, and get oxygen back in there okay it's the same thing with your embouchure that um, if you just buzz for the sake of buzzing then it's not going to help you with a tone center so when you put the mouthpiece back into your trumpet and you start playing a note all that buzzing almost kind of went out the door because if you try to do the same 
type of thing just into your trumpet, what's going to happen is you're not going to get a good sound out. Uh, it's going to sound very mumble jumbo. Okay, so don't buzz into your mouthpiece without the trumpet. What you want to do is you want to just concentrate and focus on long tones all the time. Okay, that's going to help build endurance, help build your breath, your stamina, hopefully, and and but definitely quality. That's what you're looking for. You always want to look for quality sound, quality sound, quality sound, quality sound. Second one is not all mouthpieces are created equal. When you get your first trumpet, or when you get a trumpet, most of the time, if it does come with the mouthpiece, the mouthpiece in that trumpet is a 7C mouthpiece, okay? I don't know who in trumpet land we're gonna make nothing but 7C, the standard size and cup of this mouthpiece. I'm gonna tell you right now, um, the size is seven and the cup is the C um, in the box format. And the seven C is a little tight, okay? It's a little small um, around the embouchure. So if you have, you know, kind of big lips like me, what happens is that's just, it's just not enough. It's gonna be a little tough to get to the lower notes, all right? So, um, because you don't wanna come in trying to play high notes. You know, you, you definitely want to start at the very low to mid range of the trumpet and try to get the lower notes and then up to the mid notes and just kind of stay there. And we call it the sweet spot of the horn. You want to focus on the sweet spot. So I strongly suggest, in my professional opinion, that pretty much everybody start out on the 5C. Why? It's a little bit roomier. You know, the C cup is actually a pretty nice distance from your mouth because once you get to like the A, it's sitting right on your mouth and you don't want that sitting right on your embouchure. It feels kind of weird and then does more harm than good. So C, I think is a, a great, great cup size. And I think the five would give you a lot more room to be able to focus on the mid range to the low range of the horn. And then as you start building your embouchure muscle up, then of course you can start getting higher and higher. So do I play a five? I have a custom made uh, mouthpiece and it's around the 5C area, okay? Uh, maybe like, maybe 5D, I don't know, only because I like the cup to be just a little bit further away from my mouth because it definitely gives me more of a rounder sound in my, uh, in my playing. So it's more like a 5D but I'm not too sure because it's a custom. So the guy who actually made my mouthpiece um, didn't say this is your exact size. And he, you know, he just gave me my mouthpiece. It felt great and then I paid him and then that was it. So that was my second misconception. Uh, not all mouthpieces are created equal. All right, so as of right now, all I have was two misconceptions because there's more benefits to buzzing than it, there are misconceptions, okay? So, uh, if you was to Google search a benefit, a benefit is an advantage gained from something, okay? So, the biggest benefit of buzzing into your mouthpiece is what we call pedal tone buzzing, all right? So, usually when you pedal tone buzz, you usually pedal tone buzz only when you're feeling that the blood is not flowing in your in your embouchure enough, or you're experiencing a lot of fatigue and you need to keep playing, or you wanna keep playing, all right? So just to kind of give you an example of what a pedal tone buzz is, what you're gonna do is you're not going to really have focus on the tone center at all. You're really just gonna just focus mainly on just vibration, okay? Now, when you do a pedal tone buzz, I strongly recommend that you do it with the mouthpiece in the trumpet, okay? Put your mouthpiece in the trumpet and kind of focus on that. Um, to just give you an example of what a pedal tone buzz is, check me out in this next segment. Ah! Uh -huh. 
All right, so that is what you call a pedal tone buzz. And the only reason why I went to a separate segment like that, because I wanted to precisely uh, show you how it's actually done and, and the benefits of it actually happening. So the benefit of pedal tone buzzing is to get blood flow going right into the embouchure. Okay, you don't need a tone center for that. You just want blood flow, that's it. So one thing I, I know about a lot of even top-notch professional uh, horn players is that when they're experiencing fatigue from rehearsing for, for many hours of practicing or performing for that matter, um, we always experience a lot of fatigue. Uh, and so what we do is in order to kind of revitalize our embouchure, what we do is we do a pedal tone buzz and it will get the blood flowing, reflowing again. And sometimes it also tingles the the embouchure in the in a grander scale of your of your embouchure of your mouth of your face okay and, and with the muscle as well so it kind of like stimulates the muscles as well it's almost like when you're you know in a massage chair and you got that uh, that vibration going through your back and you're shaking uh, all right it's the same thing it relaxes the muscle it kind of rejuvenates the muscle even in your embouchure okay so um, that is the, one of the biggest benefits of buzzing is definitely the pedal tone buzz. All right, so like I said, uh, there are more benefits to buzzing into the mouthpiece than there are misconceptions. And there's a ton of them, but I'm only gonna go over a couple that, are, that is very, very important at this stage uh, in your in your trumpet playing life right now. And the second one, the second benefit of buzzing into your mouthpiece, and I've said this even in the misconception spot, and that is buzzing with a tonal center. So I will say that if you were to say like play a G, right? And you took your mouthpiece out and you found that same note in your mouthpiece, Okay. And you concentrate on that. So it's like if you was to do a trade off between playing your trumpet and or playing your mouthpiece, it's easier to buzz into your mouthpiece when you're kind of on the go. All right. So but you always want to buzz with a tone center. So uh, the, the next lesson from this is going to be your first five notes on the trumpet, G, F, E, D and C. So if you were to take those notes and just buzz those notes only into your mouthpiece, okay, you will find that you will get a much better lock when you're when you're playing in your mouthpiece than you actually do the trumpet. Why? Because the trumpet is kind of already there anyway. So once you get the buzz and you get the position uh, of where the note is and you stay on that, the trumpet is going to kind of lay it out for you. With the mouthpiece, you're all on your own. You're just on your own, okay? And so it's like, you're almost like, it's almost like you're making the note yourself, all right? And if you have a good ear, or if you play to like a piano tuner or whatever, um, whether it's a, a regular tuner or a machine or whatever, you know, what happens is if you was to play those notes and you'll see if the metronome or the tune itself is going to be a 440 or if it's going to go a little bit to the flat or the uh, or the sharp side okay so what you want to do is if you're going to buzz into your mouthpiece always buzz into the mouthpiece with the mind of having a tone center all right just don't go buzz into the mouthpiece just making a bunch of noise all right because it's not going to help you all right so um i hope you enjoyed this small lecture uh, I know it can be a little wordy, but at the same time, I just want to make sure I give you as much information uh, as I can provide you so, you know, you guys can be on that path to becoming the best trumpeter that you possibly can become. OK, if you did like that, please give this uh, video a thumbs up, pass it along to some of your your friends or anybody else who may be interested in playing the trumpet and 
hopefully this information be of a blessing to them as well. And uh, feel free to hit me up anytime you wish. Uh, here's my email. Um, here's my website. If you want to check out any music. And um, yeah, but just stay in contact. And if you have any other questions, feel free to leave it down in the comment section. I would definitely read all of my comments and I will answer as many questions as I possibly can. Uh, so until then, welcome to the Trumpet family. Pleasure having you and uh, I hope to see you again soon. All right, take care.